welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial. Uh, yes, this is Unity 5, not Maya, even though we're looking at Maya at the moment. I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to get a model from Maya that you've created or that one that you've actually got from somewhere else and put it into Unity and get it ready for use in the Mech Anim system. So this is a little dragon that you might have seen in a previous tutorial that I've used and I've imported his FBX file into Maya so you can have a look what he looks like in here. Now you can see down the bottom if we scrub along this um, timeline that he's got all of his animations one after the other in there. Now this is a pretty common way of animating a character or it has been in the past. Um, a lot of the new mech anim models you see coming through have different animations in different files. Um, but this one is a more traditional format. Now you can also see by all of the little red lines down the bottom in this timeline is that the keyframes have all been baked um, or that all the frames I should say have been baked uh, for all of these animations. Okay so what you need to do if you have a model like this is to figure out which um, frame starts and ends any particular animation. Okay, so for example, he's got a running animation, which is probably from about here to there, or that might be walking. Anyway, so that goes between those two frames. Now I've already written down which frames do what, so I won't bore you with that process. Now, um, what you need to do if you haven't made uh, your animation like this um, frame by frame is that you will need to bake the animations into it, which you can do when you export it in Maya. So if you go File, Export All, and we find our animation um, option, which will be over here after you've selected FBX Export, um, you can go to the animations tick that you do want the animations and then you want to bake the animations there. Now in this case um, it's baking out all of them in the one file. You could also split up all of the individual um, animations into different FBX files and then bring those in in the way that I've done with the Mixamo characters in other tutorials which will work the same but I'm going to show you how to divide this up inside of Unity. Okay so let's assume I've done all that and I'm going to go back to Unity which is there. Okay so I've brought in the Toon Dragon here. Now I brought it in in a special way which was to just drag the FBX file from the dragon and drop it into here. Not the whole folder, just the little dragon. Okay, so I've got the dragon's FBX file. And if we open up, we can see what's in there, which is um, he's got an animation, which is going to be called Take One. This is all of those uh, frames of animation in here. And it will automatically create for us an avatar, which is needed by our animator controller which I spoke about in the previous tutorial with this little dragon. Okay, so let's drag him into the scene. Uh, and then if I find his um, actual skinned mesh and the shader that's on there, I can also drag in the color for him into his albedo, uh, which is there. Now I brought, this was a TGA file that I also brought in by dragging it from outside into here. Okay, so this will ensure that he's already set up for the Mac, uh, Mac Anim system. Okay, now let's go back to here and you'll see that he's got an animator controller added to him by default. And he's also got uh, the avatar that was created by Unity already in place. So all we need to do is create the animator controller. So under create in the project, we'll go animator controller and let's call that dragon. And we will, with dragon selected, drag and drop that over here onto the controller. Okay, now our issue is that we've got this take one animation. So if we open up the animator, 
and drag and drop our take one animation on there which will become the default we also want to just set the camera so it's looking at the same as the scene so we go align with view for that oh it's a bit far away go back to scene where is that camera Oh, it's set to orthographic by mistake. Why is it doing that? Okay, so let's, um, now we're in perspective, get a bit closer to this guy here. Okay, now back in the animator, we can then run this and we'll see that it will by default play that entire lot of animations one after the other. Now, this is not very useful if you want to control what's going on <laughs> with your character. Uh, so we need to actually split all of these animations up. Where's he gone? He's gone for a fly. Okay. Anyway, to do that, we need to come back into the assets and we find our animation that we've created before and click on our little character. Over here in the inspector, under the animations section um, if you've watched the previous video from converting legacy into mech anim, uh, then if we just look under rig you'll be interested to know that see that because we imported it by dragging and dropping the fbx file it automatically made it into a generic mech anim animation for us we didn't have to change that so in the animations section you can see that we've got this clip which includes everything um, and if we run down here in the preview, we can get a glimpse of what's going on as it plays through all of those frames for that animation. Right, so what I want to do is split this up into little clips or the ones that I want. So I might not want all of those clips that it will do. So let's just grab a few of them. Okay, so um, I'm going to make an idle one. I'm going to call it idle. And his idle animation runs from two... 58 to 378 and if we oh which is it's still running so if you just press play you can just watch what you're going to get for the idle animation okay so that's his idle animation and then we click on the little plus and it will um, add it in and you can see that it's done it there with that range of frames Right, so let's now add a jump animation. And the jump is between 379 and 414. Let's play that to see if we got the right one. Yep, great. And we can press plus to add it. Um, which it, it did, I guess we're just adding another blank one with everything in it again. Uh, and one more, let's go with fly. The fly which goes from 8.43 to 8.73. And play that. We'll see that we've got the fly loop. Great. Now... If at this point um, you want to, I'm just going to press plus just in case I'm afraid of it disappearing and I'll always leave that take there in case you do want to come back and get everything. Um, now with fly selected, if you want to loop it, um, it's at this point that you can go um, loop time and then loop pose and click on apply. And if you want any of these to loop as well, you can also loop them by setting their loops here and then hitting apply. Now, you may have noticed when I hit apply that what happened down here in the project is that I've now got some new animations. I don't just have take one. So I can drag these into our animator. So I've got fly, I've got idle, and I've got jump. Okay, so now I can get rid of this take one, which is everything. And I'm going to start with idle. So let's make that the default state. Right click on it and go set as default layer. 
and then I'm going to make a transition to here and make a transition to there. So we're going to go idle, jump, and then fly. Press play. I'm going to get the idle animation, jump, and then fly. And that's pretty much it. So you just keep dividing up your um, keyframes uh, or frames, I should say, out of that take and give them a name and they will start to appear down here. And then you use them just like any other thing that you drag into the Mac Anim system and you can start putting triggers and bulls on all of these. All right, uh, thanks for watching. So um, keep an eye out for a tutorial that she'll be coming up um, in a little while which will feature this little dragon guy as the player character and he's going to be flying around a landscape and I'll show you how to build his character controller.